All right. For now, though, I want us to uh, meet and introduce our next guest. His name is Victor Salamba. He's a relationship coach. Karibu sana, Victor. Nice to be back. Yeah, great to have you here. Yes, happy yes. birthday. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And um, uh, we want to talk about nonverbal behaviors that ruin our marriage. Mm -hmm. Hey, today I'm going to be entertained. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, maybe we can begin by first of all just define for us what do we mean by nonverbal communication um this is when someone is um not directly attacking you not directly doing something that is going to um annoy you mm -hmm. but they're doing something behind the scenes it's almost like um in your own subconscious you might say that this person is planning against me oh dear. you know because what they are doing they are not doing it directly but you're just seeing all the symptoms and you're like, this is just too much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so are there any sort of pros to nonverbal communication in a marriage? And at what point do they then become cons? Um, there's a balance, actually. There's a part of it that, that actually is wisdom. You know, for example, if at all, maybe um, someone was to pay power and they don't pay and they, and they, and they, and they fail to pay power. Mm. And they come in the evening and they find that there's no power. She so have communicated non-verbally. That is wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, but the instances whereby um, it really doesn't move into wisdom, now it becomes a bit more more like I'm being malicious, you know. Because mm -hmm. at times when maybe a, a husband would like to say something to the wife, and not use the same words, mm. you know. There are times mm -hmm. that I can want to tell my wife something and I use hints, I use sign language. Yeah. And there are moments as well when it becomes a bit, um, I can do something and now she knows this one. No, this is, this one is he's just looking for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I want us to kind of go through a few of the different uh, things mm -hmm. um, that kind of demonstrate or, or show this nonverbal communication um and because uh, today we are focusing on how they can ruin a marriage yeah, we're yeah. going to talk about why you shouldn't use these things <laughs> uh in 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 negative ways mm -hmm. all right so a big one is actually eye contact mm -hmm. and our research shows that this could be very devastating to marriages <laughs> is that true <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> when eye contact is used to achieve other ends for example, manipulation, consistent eye contact with someone of the opposite sex other than the spouse may also encourage one to, you know, think outside of their marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, one thing is that eyes don't lie. Uh -huh. Yeah. Eyes don't lie. And I know in situations in some marriages where um, you might be saying something and the look that your spouse gives you, you understand that you should change that subject. <laughs> you know, the look that you're given, you know, you're mentioning something. At times even it's just on basic ideas, you know. You can find that maybe our, our wife is trying to say, I'd like to do this. And the look that the, that the husband gives her, she knows, let me just ask something else. You know, mm -hmm. let me change this whole subject. Mm -hmm. Also, of course, the wandering eye has always been a very big issue. Mm -hmm. There are those who um, have a gift of looking around. Mm -hmm. Yes, I don't know mm -hmm. if it's a right gift or not. <laughs> but they have a gift of looking around. You have to see the gift. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they always have a, a reason why they are looking. Yeah. You know, they'll say, oh, I, you know, I thought that there was something on that side of the room or I thought that, that there was this thing happening. Mm -hmm. But there are those actually who have a very huge problem of always looking, turning and looking. And there are those who have developed a, a very good skill at that also. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's actually critical to, to, to note that in any marriage, first of all, how you look at your partner says very many things. Right. Because also remember, Joyce, the way that you look at your husband, but no one, no, no other woman, no other woman should look at him that mm -hmm. way. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so there's a way that also you can look at your at your spouse, and they know the way I'm looked at in this house. No one else look at me this mm -hmm. way. But there's a way also you can look at your spouse, and he wishes someone else would look at him. Wow. Yes. <laughs> because the look you give him is just. Oh no! This one. Yeah. So when you're talking and you're just there. You know, you've stared him down completely. Yeah, yeah. All of those things can slowly begin to break down a marriage. Yeah, right? because. The way my wife looks at me makes me know that she values me. Mm. And then she can look at me and I feel as though I'm not valid, you know. And it's possible that someone else can give me that particular look. And what? this one actually disappears through marriage. You find that when you're dating, there's a way your partner would talk and you'd look at them with awe. Then when you're married, you look at them wondering, when you're looking quiet. <laughs> and yeah. when will you give yeah. up? <laughs> so, and the person says, hey, there are days to talk, Joyce, and your face would light up. Uh -huh. Now I talk and you want to sleep, you want to throw me out of the house, it's like I'm stressing you. That's also very dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. 
I'd love to hear you guys' experiences. And if you can relate to this one specifically on eye contact, please do let me know as well. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. We're going to take a break. But when we come back, I still want us to go through touch and how that has sort of changed uh, and how that can actually change in a relationship and affect your marriage body language as well as well as a, a few other topics that we're going to be touching on here with victor salamba triple one triple four triple one is the sms line we'll be back after this guys welcome back to full circle with joyce i'm here with victor salamba and we're going through um non-verbal communication techniques or the things that we do when we uh, communicate non-verbally that actually can ruin your marriage and ruin your relationship and the first one we talked about there was eye contact and it's very interesting because again i was questioning over the break whether you know this applies to men or how how men actually apply you mm -hmm. know eye contact no 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 but a man is uh, out of it, doesn't look at you. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> sour, sour, basti. <laughs> but the ladies are the ones who will be throwing daggers at the eyes no, most of the time. Yeah, ladies will communicate all that they feel through their eyes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What about um, touch? Mm -hmm. Right? Like the, the sensation of actually touching somebody. Yeah. How does that, you know, affect a relationship? Um, I'll, I'll use this in terms of how needs are, you know, for example, um, I'll actually let me go with two, with, with two ways. First of all is, who do you touch up apart from your, your spouse? Mm -hmm. That's the first question. Mm -hmm. Because it's very important to have very good, real, physical boundaries. Yeah. You can't go hugging and touching everyone. That's right. Yeah. Because, um, and I see at times there are people who make this mistake, you know, you're a married man or a, or a married woman and you are the official hugger of everyone. You know, you're hugging everyone, giving everyone hugs and holding hands yeah. and doing what. Yeah. And that by itself is very annoying because yeah. you find that you are holding your colleague's hand and the last time you, maybe you held your husband's hand or Kwa your harusi. wife's hand. Yeah, you know, ata arusi <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty, you know, before before independence, you know. Oh that. And so over time, you find that we are touching other people more than we do our our own uh, spouses. That's wrong. How far can someone come in terms of touch? How do you um, touch people of the opposite sex? Mm -hmm. If you need to touch them, how do you touch them? Please. F because, Please. For, for example, I've got rules of engagement and I teach this to couples. Mm -hmm. I say this, for example, that my chest is for, is for, my, is for my wife. Mm -hmm. no, no one else. Mm. Yes. So even my daughter, I hug her from the side. Wah. Yes. This chest has got the person who owns it. <laughs> she has, Victor! She has full jurisdiction. Okay. <laughs> jurisdiction of the whole <laughs> Baka your daughter. Yes, my daughter will get a husband who will give her her chest. <laughs> this is mine and for my wife. End of story. Oh my! You know uh -huh. because that protects my own my own space. Yes. That 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 there are areas whereby in case anything, because there are friends you'd meet from long time ago mm. who might hug you in a way that your husband will feel. Ay. Yeah. You know, how is that guy hugging you like that? Or there's yeah. a way your husband can hug a friend like, hey, if you guys grew up together, ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. no. You yeah. know, so to protect that from itself is that have your own space. Mm -hmm. Protect yourself, you know. Know how you are touching people. Yeah. Know how you're holding people. Yeah. Be very keen. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like I need to make a special note to gentlemen yes. who like hugging ladies or putting their hands, you know, on their back. And it's way low on the back. Like, just... <laughs> distance my friend distance no actually people should keep the hands to themselves exactly yes <laughs> yeah if you know i mean even if she's not married like you have no business having your hand on her lower back at you yeah. keep them to yourself <laughs> you can and actually talk to her you can actually <laughs> em emphasize using words yeah yeah it's not a must you touch them mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Some people build that emphasis you find people in a meeting you're putting your hand on someone's thighs yeah and they're not your spouse i i get really mad at that yeah. though yeah that's so those are those are the things that can now really cause something else to come about because if your partner sees this yeah yeah also you're opening room 
remember if you begin walking to nakuru inevitably you will get there mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so you cannot be assuming that i'm touching her thighs and it's okay no at the end of the day that is some yeah. form of communication yeah still. and this happens in all sorts of things even yeah. something as simple and as hopefully innocent as taking photos yeah you know it's a group picture oh mr mama top on a pose behind you but like brah <laughs> just a chini bro no no someone was praying for that moment they were hoping <laughs> With a lot of open a door. <laughs> that time, when, and then you ask us why we've not smiled in the photo because our faces are like. <laughs> no, no, touch is very key. Remember also, with women in relationships, you like non sexual touching. Exactly. Yeah. Guy, please, please, Victor, I need you to really like emphasize this because I think there are some gentlemen who think that that is what we actually want, mm -hmm. they think it's cool. And I'm like, no, it's a turn off. Yeah. Like you're actually pushing the chick away yeah. by doing all this sexually averted, like, you know, touching. Yeah, That's not what we want. Because even in a marriage, you know, the more your husband gives you non-sexual non touching, the more sexual you actually become. Mm -hmm. But the moment that every time he touches you, it is action. You begin to feel as though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just uh, please. You I'm know, gonna break time. Yeah, you know, just you, you, you know, you, you want to you just hold me? Yeah. Every time you touch me, it's point hundred. It's point, you know. So, <laughs> but now when you see him coming to touch you, begin you be start being busy. You want to clean the roof and go water flowers and you want. I'm to be busy. clean the roof. <laughs> <laughs> because now you are you're, you're a bit fear, fearful. Yeah. So also within marriage, how we touch each other within. Marriage speaks very many things. Yes. How you touch your husband speaks very many, many things. How he touches you speaks very many things. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Let's talk about body language in general. I mm. feel like this is where a lot of women, maybe we even have associated degrees in this. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> we've mastered body language. Yeah. Um, but talk to us about that. Uh, I'm sure it's a huge turn off to men. Yeah. Because the moment that someone begins to talk to you, men... And unfortunately, men men don't push a conversation beyond how much it is it is welcome, mm -hmm. especially in marriage. If he's dating, he will push. Mm. In in uh, marriage, I look at my wife's body language from when I begin speaking to mm -hmm. the very end. Mm -hmm. If I'm telling her something that I feel is critical and she looks the other way or her body goes off, mm -hmm. then quickly what that tells me is that she's not interested. Right. And that's <laughs> when many men lie. Yeah, I'm not saying that lying is good before a riot starts. Not that lying is good, but that's how men change their stories. Mm. He's beginning to tell the wife something, and the wife already has uh, has got something in her body language that says, "I don't I want don't to hear, you. hear yeah, you. Yeah, or it's not important, or I'm busy with something else." And this is when he's coming to tell you that he just lost his job, mm. or he's coming to tell you that a chick at work was trying to hit on him. Mm -hmm. So he began the story, and their body language just went off, and he changed. He said, uh, she, she fell in the in the in the bathroom, and we are going to pray for her on Sunday." Uh, yeah. This, the story has, has ended. When you discover this in two weeks, you'll be angry he didn't tell you. But the point is that when he was communicating to you, he was keen as to how you look. Wow. How are you looking when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you are speaking? Same thing again with the women who their primary language of love is attention. Mm -hmm. Your primary language of love is at attention. You don't want to talk to your husband when he's on the phone. Mm -hmm. You want him to put the phone down, mm -hmm. turn off the TV, and look at you. Yeah. Because remember that women communicate face to face not side by side. Right. So you want your husband to look at you face to face. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important to understand that if I'm talking to you, do I have your full attention? Because all of us want to know my partner has, mm. has my full attention. Um, they are concentrating fully right. when, they are, when they are talking to me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, someone here says, hey, Joyce, uh, first of all, happy birthday. May this be a debut of great elevations from glory to glory. Wow, glory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from glory to glory. And may God grant you many more years to decree his goodness on your life. Thank you very much. That's very kind. And you say you're an inspiration to me personally that's grace helen you're very much tuned into the show asante sana um Delphine from where as well as you're saying you're really grateful for today's topics and you also say happy birthday thank you um someone here is saying hey joyce when i'm walking with my boyfriend he even turns to look at other girls it's annoying what do you do in a relationship like and this is at least a, it's a boyfriend so yeah. at least <laughs> my i feel like telling her like run before <laughs> before you're married but you know how do you deal with that because obviously he's showing even before mm. a commitment is made, like his eyes, you know, are wandering all over the place. I think that the moment she sees a lady coming and the, and the boyfriend turns to look at him, I think she should turn him to face her. Then she runs the other direction. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Just that. Yes. Oh, Ensure he's fully concentrated, then just turn and walk. You wouldn't even know when you're gone. Where? Yeah. That one you run and keep running and never look back. Because what you're dealing with, you're dealing with a potential uh, universal charger. <laughs> and so you don't want... <laughs> we used to say, <laughs> Yeah. So symptoms are already there. <laughs> if your boyfriend is wandering early, and, uh, uh, just let him wander off. Mm. Yeah. Eh? Okay. Okay. Let's talk about blind spots in words and actions. You know, things that you may be saying that you're not cognizant of how damaging they are. But I, I'm, I'm sure there are words like those for both men and for women. Yeah. Um, first, for, first and foremost, uh, I, I, I would pick one which is so common, eh? is your people. Mm. Yeah. You know, your family or your people are always late. Mm. Yeah. But some, some things you normally know, that come out very badly. Mm -hmm. You know you know how your sister is. Mm. You see, you know how your mother is. Mm -hmm. Those statements by themselves kind of knock us off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for any person, you know, because if my wife says that about my mom or my sisters, I get a bit, you know, mm -hmm. or the same if I say that about her, her parents also. Secondly, also, is how we look. Yeah. How we look. Because you can make a statement and tell your wife something very uh, crazy like, ah, that dress no, no longer fits you. Oy. See, translation in English is different. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, at times, just those particular small statements we say, and at times, actually, they come out subconsciously. Yeah. Yeah. And you find that, but the problem is not normally the, the reaction. Because mm -hmm. the reaction also is another non-verbal communication. Because your husband says something like that, and just what you do, you switch off. Mm. You give him silent treatment. Mm -hmm. So, he spends the next two weeks researching. <laughs> what happened? Why aren't you talking to me? Because he's not even... It doesn't even know. Okay. So it's also important to understand that also that when such things happen, bring them up early. Mm. Tell your partner, there I think you went off. Right. The time I might mean well, but just the language I chose, I was not gifted with it. Mm. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Very true, very true. I want us to go back to one that you mentioned the, concerning the opposite sex. And yeah. a big one there is about these gadgets of ours and communication with the opposite sex through these gadgets yeah. it could be anything from you spend way too much time on somebody's facebook page admiring their photos or you are constantly on the phone even late in the evenings and you claim it's you know a work call or it's a colleague you know how do you juggle that because anyway legitimately there could be someone that is a colleague of the opposite sex and you do have to deal with them but um I'm assuming one should create some sort of boundaries as far as when you talk to them, mm -hmm. how you even talk to them. Yeah. Is it better to call somebody, to text them? You know, does that matter? I think at, at the end of the day, it's what boundaries do you have? Mm -hmm. Because first things first, I say this, in any marriage setting, um, there is no, but my wife has full access to what whatever gadget I have. Mm -hmm. That's rule number one. She must have access to my Facebook page, my Instagram page, everything that I have, she must have access to. Mm -hmm. This in turn shows that there's nothing that I'm, that I'm hiding. Because you have nothing to hide, I hide nothing. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the rules of, in, in, rules of engagement also. You can't be at night in the bed at 10.30 mm. chatting with a, with a colleague. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's disrespectful. Yeah. yeah. No matter what, even though you're talking about business, no matter what, that is disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, even though I'm doing business, I must respect my family first. True. I can't be at home having dinner with my kids and I'm on the phone talking to colleagues. Right. Yeah. And those colleagues of yours, they get more emojis than your wife does. You <laughs> Why <laughs> not to text ya where? Sapa ni nini? Eh, sapa ni nini? Tunakula nini jioni? And yet yeah. your colleagues, you could text. Oh, you did a great job. Emoji, smiley face, na na na. Ay, bra, no. And you know what it, it, it actually speaks, Joyce? Is that I have put more effort to be deliberate in this relationship. Right. I'm not deliberate with the relationship I have with you. Yeah. Yours is on, is on autopilot. The one I have with my colleague, I am present. Mm -hmm. That's why those, those, when you have time to think about this emoji, I'll, I'll post and I'll say this. I know people wake up in the morning and text, you know, ladies or text guys, good morning, how did you sleep? And you left your spouse on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> don't even know if they if at all they, they will they will wake up or ah, not. But yeah, the first yeah. thing you did, good morning, how did you sleep? Yeah. And your partner is right next to you. You know? You that person should be jailed. Mm. Yeah, that's that's messed up. <clears throat> that's really messed up. Let me read some SMSs here. Hey Joyce, how can I be sensitive to nonverbal cues that my husband gives to me? I've never really been able to pick up 
anything? And that's a good question. Like, how, how do you sort of distinguish? Maybe someone has just been irritated with you over a while and now they've kind of settled into these nonverbal cues. And how do you pull them out of it? Because I feel like the maybe part of the greatest danger of these um, nonverbal cues is that they become so rooted mm -hmm. and can easily transform into bitterness or just someone just doesn't care anymore about the relationship. So you're married by paper and by your wedding band, mm. but their heart is just not in the relationship. I will say the first thing you protect in any marriage is emotional space. Protect it with all of your life. Nothing or no one should enter. Your children, your job, your religion, nothing enters in emotional space. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have allowed nothing, if you have stopped something from entering, then Joyce also must have a system where you are conscious about your partner every single day. One of the biggest mistakes we have is that we sleep through marriage. Mm. We sleep through marriage. So I don't realize that my wife today looks a bit off. Why is she a bit off? Mm. Yeah. Secondly, also, we need emotional maturity. Now, here is where the work is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the emotional maturity to sit and tell your partner, listen, you said this and it hurt me. Mm -hmm. One thing we do nowadays and it's so common, number one, is silent treatment. Mm -hmm. And to me, I have a scientific word for those who use silent treatment. Ototo. <laughs> <laughs> so I Very scientific. So I game up with. <laughs> because it means that I am not emotionally mature enough to tell my wife that you said this and it hurt me, or you said right. this and it, and it uh, you know, and I got angry. I'm giving you three weeks to to do research. Mm. Three weeks, I can't find it. So after three weeks, I'm asking. Then I also go to a point now to keep quiet. Mm. After three weeks, we we come back together because time has lied to us that we have healed. But time is a bank that gives you interest over, over time. Mm. So I am now hurt by you. I keep quiet. After three weeks, we go shopping. We are talking. Next week, when you, I know, when you, I know, when you, when you, when you do something, what happens? Mm. I tap back to that past three yeah. weeks. So it builds over time. That's why you it keep hearing it. You time. always. Yes. You always do. You always say, Kumbe is just that bank. Yes. Because of we, unresolved issues. And there's always, we never dealt with it. That's why it's important that I am hurt. I'll take my time out. I'll come back until you listen. And you didn't want to, meaning I'm taking emotional responsibility for my emotions. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. marriage, you can delegate your emotions to your partner. Okay. Yeah. Someone here is asking, um, please ask Victor, why is it that men are jealous at times? I it, think everybody still wants, every ladies especially, want to know like they still got it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like even after the marriage, after kids, like they, you know, they still are able to put themselves together, are still attractive and whatnot. So, Obviously, there are some men who are excessively jealous, like, don't wear this, don't do that hairstyle. And I mean, I think there's some measure of room for it, but there are people also who take it way out. I think we have to <laughs> balance that word a bit. Mm -hmm. Because, um, one, it's a, it's a good thing. It means that um, he's afraid he might lose you. Mm -hmm. That is good. Because mm -hmm. also, if he was never jealous, you'd be worried. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, if you dressed and he looked at you and looked the other way, you'd actually be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> so I think take it first of all as a plus as a positive. that he's yeah. recognizing that uh, he married someone who's yeah. attractive. Yeah. Now there's a difference between him and now be possessive. When he's mm. being possessive, now that's why it's actually crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, as as a man, I have to be conscious that when my wife leaves the house, that there are men who will look at her. Right. I have to be conscious about that. But I also cannot also be over possessive that mm. I stop her from being. Mm. You no. Know, Mm -hmm. So there has to be that particular balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pam here watching from Nyeri says, Happy birthday, Joyce. And Hapokwa Touch, men should be warned from touching women, mostly in matatus. It's irritating and a sign of disrespect to ladies. I'd like you to comment on that, Victor. Well, if you can punch him, punch him. Uh, yeah. I said that live. You must have a comment. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> you know <laughs> and you know also um men are daring men will always push boundaries mm. yeah and you must be rigid about your boundaries yeah the okay. problem is that he touches you then the thing the only thing you do is that you sneer yeah sneer does nothing yeah yeah ask him of all the places in this matatu you have to touch my my thighs touch <laughs> put your hands on the roof Touch something else. Of all the places, this way you have to learn. Jishike Mwenyewe. <laughs> and make it loud. Let, let, let it be known. Yeah. Yeah, that this guy is touching me, you know. Actually, and there's a point that obviously you need to do it in a way because sometimes you also have to be mindful of safety. Mm. I don't, I mean, ladies unfortunately go through a lot in yeah, our society. Yeah. So be careful also that you're in a place that you can do it safely. But I think there's something you're saying about verbalizing that yeah. what he's done is wrong. Yeah. 
and and not sort of i think sometimes we use our quietness and our disgust and we keep it to ourselves but in a way we almost normalize that sort of behavior so i think there's there's something you're, you're yeah, on to yeah there. because because men push envelopes men push en envelopes and when he dares you and you just sneer he's not sure men always read wrong signs mm. how many guys joyce have you known who are your friends who thought that you're into them how much time do we have <laughs> I have a list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Men always read wrong signs. Uh -huh. They always read wrong signs. Yeah. So when a guy touches you and you don't say anything about it, automatically he can read that. She wants me to try harder. Mm. Yeah. So it's good to be very clear. Tell him, put your hands on the roof. Sit on your hands. Yes. Yeah. Put them where I put them, but don't yeah. put them here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Um, let me just touch on two questions very quickly because I know I need to wrap up. Someone here is saying, hey Joyce, my husband's exes are still chatting him and they are um, ever unhealthy, yet he chats back. Do you call him out? What do you do in that situation? You have situation? to call him out. You have, you have to call him out because he's having an emotional affair right yeah. before you yeah. and deal with it as though he's having an affair. Yeah. He should respect you enough. An ex remains an ex. Yeah. There's no business of an ex in, in any marriage. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow, Victor, thank you so much for coming on to the show as always and just uh, telling us about these nonverbal cues. These are things all of us do. I think we just, we don't think about how much uh, we do them and how much they're damaging our relationships. Yeah. But how can people find you? You can find me. I'm always active on Facebook, Victor Salamba. I post everything I do there. Okay. Also my website, victorsalamba.co.ke. Great. Yes. Fantastic. Great. Asante sana. We Great. hope to see you again soon. Yes. And with that said, guys, uh, we're going to take a break now as we get ready for our fitness segment. Today, they're going to be focusing on upper body. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. And I'll be back after this.